What's up? You are watching the pitch. Hey guys, after a week off, we're back. Welcome to The Pitch. I'm your host, as always, John Fox, along with our two analysts, Mitch Sabatelli and Mike Peroni. Now, What's up? we've got some information for you. We're going back to filming on Fridays, and until any, uh, any other further notice, uh, Mike Peroni, Peps, is, gonna, is going to be our full-time analyst. Yeah, and since we're filming we on it. Fridays, it should get up sometime either Saturday or Sunday. Over the, sometime over, over the weekend. weekend. Yeah. Now, today, we are in the middle of the NBA and NHL playoffs. Intense. And Ryan Braun decides to crash in the middle of this, okay? So, um, we'll start off with top stories. Ryan Braun being the biggest top story. Five-year, $105 million <laughs> deal. Now, is this smart for the Brewers? Or risky. Yeah, this is... Uh, uh, risky. It's not smart or, or risky, really. Uh, that's a lot of money. Carl Crawford made a lot of money, but you have to see what Carl Crawford made. It's not, it's, not too, it's not too much for Ryan Braun. Ryan Braun's putting up monster numbers already in 2011. He's one of the best hitters in the game. He's a big power hitter. He already has six home runs. Um, he's putting up 15, R 15 RBIs, 360 batting average. He's that big clog in the middle of that lineup. He can go to all, all fields. He's a great hitter. He's never hurt. I love Brian Braun. He's one of my favorite players, and uh, him and Prince Fielder are a great one too. You got the average guy, you got the straight up power yeah. guy, and uh, it's a great team. And Ryan Braun deserves it. And he's been, he's good he's good at defense. He's played third for them. He's played left field. Um, he can do it all. So I think it's a solid deal. Um, the only thing is, it, it, it is till twenty twenty, and um, oh, wow. la, la, that's a huge thing. That all the way to twenty twenty. Last year he had a down year. They're kind of banking on he's having a great year right now, and they're kind of banking on that he's going to be pretty good all the way until then. You just hope he doesn't. You just hope he doesn't start to fall as he, you know, gets up yeah, to that money. Yeah, and that's what they're hoping too. Because that's you know, yeah. A Rod. Hey. And the good thing about Ryan Braun is he's still only like twenty seven years old, so that shouldn't be a big problem. Oh, yeah. He should be around him up for a while. Yeah, he'll be there until he's around thirty five years old, which is pretty good. And that's the end of the problem. You don't want to have anybody past thirty five, and then. That's that's when they start to fall. That's what it's uh, same kind of call. Oh man, ask for signs. He doesn't call it for thirty five. Yeah, but you can ask other like Barry Bonds, unless you start juice. Well, Barry well, Bonds doesn't juice. I mean, yeah, that should be a problem for him. Yeah, it, I mean Ryan Braun doesn't look like he's juicing either. He's pretty. Nah, he's, he's a beast. Muscular. But yeah, I, it might, it's a little risky right now, but I think it could be yeah. smart in the long run. We are talking about twenty one million a year, so that's still a good amount. It, of money. He doesn't play a demanding position. Left field's not that tough. Like this, the deal that Troy Tulowitzki got left field, playing left field's, shortstop. Left field's kind of rough. What outfield's rough? Left, I'd say left field's one of the most important, the more like the most important. Ah, uh, the outfield. I don't think it's important to say catcher or shortstop. If you look at uh, yeah, true. The last true. couple yeah. of deals, you see a Joe Maurer cash in. You see a Troy Tulowitzki cash yeah. in. Those are really injury yeah. demanding positions, and uh, the older you get, the harder it is to play those positions. Positions. Ryan Braun. Um, he's playing left field. If he if he's a little bit older, they can shift him out to right field. They can maybe play him first base. So I, I I like the deal. That's a good deal. Yeah. Very versatile player. So. Mm -hmm. Should work out. All right. Now, given the choice, if you were the Brewers, do you sign Fielder or Braun? Yeah, problem. Fielder is like you know he's a big guy, so afraid of yeah. the breakdown thing. Mm -hmm. though. that's what you're afraid of. You know, Braun's more like I said, he's more versatile. He puts up consistent numbers lately, especially yep. now. Seems like he's up to a career season. So. Yeah, I think that's the big problem with this deal. The Brewers, I mean, they they were st so strapped for cash. They're, they're a small market team. Yeah. And Prince Fielder is a free agent. Ryan Braun wasn't going to be a free agent for another couple of years, and uh, they decided to lock up Braun now. Uh, I think that basically signals that they might not be getting a fielder back, or maybe it, this entices fielder to maybe to take a pay cut. Shot. Yeah, maybe yeah. take a pay cut and say, "Look, we're we're committed. We're committed to winning. We're not going to let you, let yeah. let Ryan Braun go like we did with CC. We're going to sign Braun, and then we can sign you. You guys can be there for the future." But um, if I'm the Brewers, I'm definitely keeping Ryan Braun. Yeah. Like Pep said, uh, Prince Fielder, he's he's a little bit younger. He's only like 25 years old. But he is, really he's, he's a big guy. guy. He's kind of fat. He's yeah. a little bit overweight. <laughs> and and uh, especially the Brewers, there's not a DH spot like a David Ortiz can go. He's going to have to play first base for the next five, ten years or so. Yeah. And uh, that's going to be demanding if he gets a ten-year deal once he, once he starts being I mean, 32. Yeah. You're basically I, I done. I see him stick with the Brewers. I don't see him getting much money elsewhere. I don't yeah. see anyone else really going to pay him. I mean, he's really, he's, he's really, really good player. But yeah. I don't see anyone's really paying him 
like money like Braun just got. Yeah, when you I say he's a really, really Michael good Michael player, Michael. Ryan Braun, I think, is a really good, really, I mean, really like, good player. I mean, Prince Fielder's a really, really good power too, hitter. Though. Yeah, yeah. What he can do is he hits for power, and he sometimes has those, those averages. We can hit 280, and other yeah. times he can go up to 310. He's a solid hitter. I think he's like, but the problem is, like you said, he's a little bit overweight, and, it's, and right now he's 25, which shouldn't be a problem. But you've seen what, when the Phillies got Ryan Howard and signed him to the deal. They signed him when he was 30, and they signed him to a seven-year deal. Uh, that's going to be a problem down the line because he's going to have to play first base. He's not a DH role. Yeah. And Ryan Braun isn't in the best shape either. You're already seeing his his skills kind of declining. I think it's the same thing with Prince Fielder. I think it's a smart deal with Walker Braun. Yeah. Um, they get a better chance with Braun than Fielder. I agree. Braun seems like that franchise guy. More yeah, he's, Braun. The, he's, the, he's the face of the franchise. Yes. All right, moving on to the NBA playoffs. The Celtics go up 3-0 on the Knicks. Yep. Now, what are they flipping the switch like they did last year? Um, I don't know. It's, it's a little too early. Right now, yeah. this was a committee win going up by 20. The first two games, yeah. Ray Allen... Um, he had, he had a great, that was one of the greatest shots I've ever seen. That was tremendous. And then they had the Kevin Garnett game in the second game, and he made a great play. That and rebound it, was nice. Yeah, he, he made a great defensive play, and he made a great uh, offensive play. Ray Allen made the great play in the game before. This was the first commanding win. Rajon Rondo with 20 assists. Um, we needed a game like the this. The big problem is their bench, and uh, they, the bench is throwing up zero points. Jeff Green was the only person yep. to score on the bench today, and he only put up nine points. Uh, you've seen him leading on... 35-year-olds, Paul Pierce and Ray Allen, and they're getting 35 points. If you just lean on the big four and without yeah. without a healthy Shaq, because who knows, Shaq, well, Shaq might not be back, That you need a healthy bench. You need Big Baby to really step up. You need Zelante to step up. And right now, I don't see it. When I saw last year, I saw them as a championship yeah. team. They were all ready for it, and they were surprising people. They were taking out Cleveland. They were. The Knicks, they should absolutely be destroyed. Oh, yeah, they are. Well, the problem is that the first two games scared me in the sense of, you know, people were even saying, watch out for yeah. the Knicks. Because they had no Stoudemire, no Billups. Right? Yeah. Stoudemire played like 17 minutes. Yeah. The, and Billups wasn't even there. He wasn't even on the roster. Mm -hmm. you know, well, mean, he was like, hurt. Well, yeah, exactly. In game two, when Amari went out in the first quarter, they had no Amari and they had no Billups. That should have been a complete yeah, destroy exactly. right there. And, and Carmelo no, kept in the game. Points. 42 points. Rajon Rondo kept him into the game in the second game. 30 points. Yeah, that was that was intense. That was clutch. That was a great game right there. But um, they got lucky in game two. They really tore it on in game three. Yeah. And now, they, who knows, maybe they can flip the switch. But the problem is, like, you're playing the Knicks, you're winning 87-85. Like, the Knicks aren't really a good defensive team. We're only yeah. scoring 87 points. We were Ray Allen bail us out. Yeah. That was a tough shot. If you're winning too. a game 87-85 against that's the Knicks, good, but that's bad. great. Because the Knicks are, like you said, an offensive team. If you can hold them under or under ninety points, yeah, that's a good defense, game. They're non-defense team too. We only scored eighty-seven points. It shows we're lacking offense. Uh, that shows to me the, the bench. That shows to me because I bench. saw with the first game, all of our starters had double digits, at least twelve points or plus for every player. O'Neal through Garnett, yep. Rondo, Allen, and Pierce, and everyone else. I saw two, four, two, and like seven points. Yep. We listen. We gave you our big defensive stud in Kendrick Perkins. For an offensive force on the bench. And Jeff Green really needs to step up. I want him putting up starter type numbers right want, now. Yeah, exactly. He's going to put up at least 15 points a game. He needs to be our opposer here. We're not going to get there. Yeah. I'm, I'm saying that right now. Right now, it looks like the Celtics are a little bit old. And they have to rely on that big four. And they have no bench. Yeah. And they have no defensive uh, number five guy. Who, knew, who knows? Jermaine O'Neal got hurt in the second game. Yeah. He came a little All bit back. Yeah. Nadine Christich is playing th three minutes or so. He's, he's not even in. Might they're as well just be sitting on the bench. I might they're as well just jump three in. Three on, the on the bench. I know. So they, I mean, they have, they have Big Baby. I don't know where he's been. They need Shaq back. If they can get Shaq back and move Jermaine O'Neal uh, to the bench, we're, maybe we're get a little more defense. in the second game because we were short players. We had like nine people in total. But yeah. And to answer that question, I don't see them flipping the switch right now. I think they're getting a little lucky. Right now, they should be up 2-1. I'm series. glad to have 3-0 because we need the rest. Yep. We need to make sure we get everyone back. I we agree. Get Shaq back in there. I agree. Even though Jermaine O'Neal is not doing bad for some And I have a feeling even if Shaq's ready to play in game four, he's not going to play. Because yeah. if you're, if you're yeah. up 3-0... You I might as well sit up yep, for the next series. Yeah, right the next we series. need him to be pumped up for the next series against Miami. I agree. All right, now, moving on. In the West, the Thunder are up 2 on the Nuggets. Yeah. Now... Are they the team to beat in the West? I I don't know if the Lakers start if the Lakers show me that they can just take these next three against the Hornets. Mm -hmm. I think the Lakers still the team. San Antonio that loss to Memphis scared me though. Yeah, it did. Like I don't I don't know if I like that because I kind of predicted that though. I said Memphis was going to be tough for San Antonio. Yeah. They're, San Antonio's an old age team. What really shocked me is Hornets taking that game one against the that Lakers. That was nice. But I didn't watch that. It, I mean, the Lakers, they've been in the finals the last three years. Until they take them, 
so, until somebody proves to me that somebody yes. can take the Lakers down, they are the team to beat. Yeah, but exactly. right now, Thunder look good. Thunder. I do not want to say Thunder. 72 points combined in the first game. You got Durant with 41. You got Westbrook with 31. Mm -hmm. Then you got everyone else just doing their job. Then you got Kendrick Perkins, that big defensive Perkins, force there. Yeah. You got James Harden. You got a Harden great team. Harden 18 How points yesterday. Wilson? He was hitting three. Serge like Ibaka. Ibaka. Ibaka I, I, I really like the Thunder. I, you know, I picked the Bulls Thunder to be in the finals, and I think the Thunder could be I, the team to beat. I love what the Pacers are doing to the Bulls. They're giving them a battle test yeah, for the, the next Bulls, round. The Bulls are clearly taking that. Yeah, I know. I'm just saying they haven't won by double digits, and you are facing the 8th seed. Mm -hmm. And they're a, they're a, like, 37 and 45 team. So, yeah. I mean, it's like, you should be beating them. You're 25 right now, so if you had to put money on it, who do you think is going to the finals? If, if the Lakers I'd are... go with the Heat of the Celtics right now. No, I'm talking about the West. All the West. I'd go with... I'd say Thunder Lakers in the... Uh, no, Wes, but who do you think has the upper hand? I like the Thunder. Really? I love what they're doing. The problem is, like, you need Harden to be producing those eighteen points every every game. You said two. You said two weeks ago that it was going to be the Celtics Lakers. So you're changing your opinion right yeah. now. Yeah. You know, no, I, I'm just I, saying that because the but the Lakers may be half assing it, so they can just get into the next round. You never yeah. know. You know, I called Bulls Thunder. I think they were the two strongest teams going in. Compared to all the co competition, you know, I think the Thunder with that big uh, guy oh, in Kendrick God, Perkins, no other guy, no other team can take that. And the Lakers are, are a little too old for me, and yeah. they have a lack of motivation. Uh, in in, in, in the things. East, speaking of motivation, they're all yeah. pumped up. Tom Thibodeau's got them going. Yeah. Derek Rose is going. I don't see the Celtics. They don't have motivation. The Heat are too inexperienced, I and I, I think it's big. A, it's I think a big this part game could have been the big wake up call if we just. I don't know how much we just won by, but mm -hmm. from what I heard, it was a good amount that we beat them by. So I mean. You know, the good thing for the Thunder is they have that second guy. Yeah. It was always just Durant. Westbrook has really stepped up this season. He's Westbrook kind of like, is one of the most improved all-star player. player. Was Speaking he on of the US 18 too? Yeah. Yeah. Speaking yeah. of most improved player, Kevin Love gets the deal. I can't argue that. Yeah. He's, he, was a, he was a terrific player. He's, He's definitely <laughs> the most improved player. But as far as the... He's for Westbrook, though, too. <laughs> yeah, I agree with Westbrook, too. <laughs> and also Derrick Rose. He was improved as hell, too. <laughs> he, he put up, like, 39 points yeah. in the first But as far as the team to beat, I think like, the Thunder might be the best team on the paper, but you can't knock up the Lakers after you've been you in the finals two years. You can't knock up the Celtics, either, because you got to beat them first. Yep, yeah, exactly. Beat them first, and then you take that title. All right, moving on to the NHL playoffs. The Canadians yeah. come into Beantown, take two. We take what do we do? We counter, take the next two. Tell now... Who has the mental edge, and has your opinion changed in the series? I, I, I got to go to the Bruins right now. You know they have yeah. the, they have the home ice right now. I thought that was completely Bruins draining. Going. Going. Bruins We're coming Sims. for your price. <laughs> no, listen, <laughs> Peps, Peps, Peps. <laughs> Peps, going in, going in there. I thought the Bruins had the advantage. I thought they had the better team. I think we'll talk about the next question. Yeah. But the Bruins will completely drain those first two games. Oh. The fact that they oh. came back in these next two games shocks the fans. And especially last game when they were three one, that showed me some sense of ad adversity right there. Yeah. Down three one, they could have they could have shut it in, and they could have they could have just let they it go. Down the whole but they game. were back. It was three one. Chris Kelly is having a great playoffs. He's breaking out right now. Rich Peverly's breaking out, and I think uh, Tim Thomas really stole one there yeah. the last time in the game. Uh, the only one player in the Bruins I don't I don't understand is Milan Lucic. The guy cannot score. Um, I didn't see him on the box score at all. He's man. just not doing. He hasn't <laughs> scored a goal in uh, over a month. He's their he's their thirty goal scorer. He we needs need to put the puck up. in the net, need and he's not doing that. But right now, I think the mental edge definitely goes to the Bruins after the shock of them taking two. And I saw Montreal sit in that in that stadium for at least another ten minutes, just absolutely shocked. Yeah, but I'm thinking of, after if, that. If this is an away game. series, if this is going to be one of those away series, we're screwed. Yeah, because we got Game Seven and Game Five at home. We need. So, it. Just, I think this we game need to capitalize on the power plays. This game, we're this 13, next game is over, absolutely yeah. Over thirteen, the power plays. This but next I mean, game is absolutely huge. I think whoever wins this next game is going to take the series. I think the Bruins can prove. Oh, we we got the home home ice advantage. We need to go back up there and take it. If if the Bruins if the Canadians counter, then we're basically screwed because then we need to win the can 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 again. We're good against them. Both teams are good. very good against adversity. They've yep. proven it time and time again. Yeah, especially the Canadians. That's yeah. why. That's why I don't know. The I one, give a thing, the one thing about the Bruins, Canadians, though. the Bruins are always back in their own zone. They're never fighting. Canadians are right there. They're Canadians always attacking the like, puck. Hey, they are very, the puck, very I'll fast. From you. And I, I know Claude Julien's style is defensively, uh, yeah. he's up, but uh, they need to really push it. And I think that big problem is Milan Lucic. Yeah, exactly. Krejci needs to find Lucic better. And Cavalier, like, he's supposed to be a power play weapon right there. And we cannot cash in the power play. But Cavalier really needs to step up, in my opinion, too. I agree. All right, sounds good, guys. Moving on. Detroit sweeps Brzezgalov's Coyotes. Oh, yeah, now, beautiful. Is Detroit underrated and possibly the West oh, best? Yep. Yeah. They remind me of like the Thunder of like this year. 
How did they remind you of the Thunder? The thunder this is a complete opposite. Come on, complete opposite. Detroit, Detroit's kind of like San Antonio. Detroit's very old. The yeah, thunder but San Antonio, very San Antonio no. just crapped like a baby in the first game. <laughs> I, I, can, I compare the Thunder more to like the Kings, a really no. up-and-coming team. Kings, Kings faded quick. Yeah, but how can, they, how, how, can you, how can you compare the Thunder who are having an average hockey. age of 25 to the Red Wings who everybody's 35 it plus? It doesn't matter. We're talking about age. Talking about team. All right. We're talking about. We're talking about age. So what are you saying? I didn't mention age. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. He's he's insane, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the Red Wings just making them look awful. The Coyotes, man. Yeah. I mean, uh, Franzen stepped up. Who else? Uh, was it Datsuki? Like yep. two goals, four assists. That's a huge 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 It was a big job for yeah. them, and I mean, you gotta give it to them. You know, I mean, they're taking out the six eight. Please. Speaking of underrated, I think Mike Babcock's the most underrated coach in the NHL. It's, when you get into the playoffs, it's a whole other game. You team, see teams like fail, like the Canucks. You see teams fail, like the Capitals. Yeah. When Red Wings step in, they really step in. They're always in the Western Conference Finals. It seems they're a real experienced team, and I think that really shows what Mike Pab Babcock's doing. I think their goaltending is terrific. I think their defense is terrific. Oh, and, Howard, man. Yeah, Howard's, oh. Howard's terrific. But uh, you know, Detroit—they're a little bit older, but they're still pretty fast. They attack the. The, they attack the net. They always have the puck in their own zone, in the other person, other team's zone. And if they give up a goal, they're right back out there, and they'll they'll take back two against you. I'll and give, I really like Detroit this year. I'll give them the Celtics. I compare them to the Celtics. I, uh, I that's that's right. That's right. Celtics. Okay. Yeah. Because they came from the. They're a great team. They came from the four they're, seed. They're coached well. They're a great I team. Think, yeah. They win yeah. the strike. You want to win enough and keep the older players in shape for the playoffs. See, the yeah. strike at this See, time. If I look at a Thunder in the NBA, I think of an up and coming team ready to fight, Kings, really hungry. Yeah. But the Kings, the, the Red the Wings, Kings. They, they win. Well, you know? Yeah, I know. So. All right. Also, while we're still on the topic of the Coyotes, uh, Briz Galov is a free agent after the season. Yeah. Now, do you think his performance. Uh, Will affect him. Oh, it's got it. He's got. He's yeah. one of the top free agents <laughs> out there. But uh, you, you see, Anthony Niemi cash in with the yeah. with the Sharks, and I think Bruce Gale's got it. After that huge year he had last year, and again this year, he is that. I, I look at him and Pekka Rene as the two goalies that absolutely carry. Tim Thomas is solid too, but I think the Bruins have a solid mm -hmm. team. But if you look at Pekka Rene with the National Predator, Predators. And uh, Bruce Galeoff, that, that offense isn't that great. Jones is solid, but, I mean, they're really carrying them. And I, if I look at a team that's, that really needs a goalie, a playoff team that has a great offense, maybe like the Flyers who really need a goalie, they're going to go after Bruce Galeoff and they're going to yeah, have a complete team. Yeah, a playoff team, he, he, he just showed that he doesn't that's the he big can't problem. play in the playoffs. That's, so, Show that, that he doesn't belong there. I'm not, I'm not doing it. When I, the, he is going to take a he is going to take a pick up from that. Oh. Uh, taking off the playoffs, last year he, he screwed up. Uh, this year he took, screwed up. But if I, I think he's definitely going to cash in for a team like that who needs a goalie. All right, I'll give it to you. Yep. Sounds good. Now, moving on. Uh, the Caps up 3-1, and it looks like they can make a run for us. Now, uh, given what you've seen, what you guys seen, are they the uh, best of the East? Um, I don't know about that. I, 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 I think the Flyers are not up with the Sabres star. right now, though. I'd be a little feared if I with them. Yeah. The Miller and the net. But, uh, you know, the for right now, I don't see why not. Because yeah. they're two series tied, like two two. What about the other one though? Is uh, the other one the other one's three one penguins? Three one penguins. So I mean I don't know that. I like the penguins. Still. I like, I like the too. penguins still. I don't like that the, the capitals are known to fade. I also like the Bruins in Montreal. Whoever squeaks to that, I think they have a shot. The East is very wide open this year. You've seen last year, it was shocking that Washington left. They look like the surefire, yet they're going to win the East. They're going to be there. Canadians. The Canadians. The Canadians took them down. Uh, Scrappy. Uh, you know, the East is <laughs> Scrappy Canadians. <laughs> the East is very wide open right now. I think whoever can win that uh, that series out in Boston, Montreal, has a chance. But I really think... I think I think Washington has flipped the switch here. I think they're I think they are the best team in the East. I, yeah. I like the Flyers, but you know Bob Grosky, he 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 failed kind of in the playoffs. Now they're back to Brian Boucher. I don't like that goaltender right there. And I think Washington's too solid with Varlamov. He had a great game. Um, I think Washington's back. I think Ovechkin's back. I think Simmons back. I think. And Mike Green's back. They're a great team right now, and I think they're my pick right now for the East. Flurry and the Penguins are going to bring a flurry of pain to that Western. I like the, I like the Penguins too. And who, who knows? Maybe they can cross back here. But you know yeah, what's you know what's great about the Penguins? I, I thought they had this. both of them back right yeah. now. It would be so disgusting. Yeah, they would be pretty good. Yeah, they would be, be talking good. about this. And speaking lightning. of underrated, Dan Bylsma, the coach of the Penguins, he yeah. is terrific. He gets everybody focused. I saw him on twenty four seven to get the yeah twenty four seven on NHL. Uh, the the TV show. He's a great coach. He's very animated. 
Uh, he's one of my favorite coaches there. He gets everybody pumped up. Yeah. Flurry, Flurry steps it up like no other goalie yeah. in the playoffs. When you need him, he's a beast. So you like Penguins in there? Yeah. Nice. I just say one thing for the Lightning. Where's Where's Le Cavalier? Yeah, Le Cavalier. Yeah, I feel bad for Louis Saint yeah. Louis because he's getting like all I like this. The, I like the Lightning too. They got a They got a tough draw there with the Penguins though. Yeah, they but I, if I had to pick two teams, I think Boston's still there if they can pull out of this, and I think Washington's there. I have Boston and Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. I okay. think Washington will lose in the next round. We'll see. All right, we've got MLB, NFL coming up next. Stay tuned, guys.